Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Um, today, we're talking about getting knocked down when we're striving for goals, but how do you get back up along the journey? So today on the podcast, um, we're also going to be talking about how to overcome obstacles along the journey to success, how to be invincible and get back up every time you get knocked down. And as a little bonus, if any of you out there are interested in starting a podcast, this is the episode you want to listen to because we're going to be talking about a great way to market and monetize your podcast for your business or for your personal pleasure. Um, So if you've been thinking about that and or if you're struggling with any obstacles, you are going to want to listen to the wisdom of today's special guest. So again, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 squash the dieters mentality and lose weight for the last time. I do not condone dieters mentality. There are no pills, potions, no craziness, no insane workouts when you work with me. It really is kind of understanding why you're doing the things that you're doing and moving past them. I've been doing this for 20 years now. I can't believe I'm saying that out loud, but it's been 20 years. Um, I also have a medical degree in physical therapy, and I'm also certified as a personal trainer through one of the top certified um, certifications in the country, and also as a health coach through that same company. So if you really want to learn how to lose weight simply, and it doesn't need to be complicated, I want to invite you to schedule a discovery call with me at shapeitupfitness.com slash call. And let's talk about what's holding you back and get you started on how to really lose weight for the last time in an easy, simple, doable way. Again, that website is shapeitupfitness.com slash call. All right. So if you are a follower of the podcast, you know, on Tuesdays, I come and I talk about fitness mindset and nutrition. And on Thursdays, I have the honor of bringing on special guests to share their brilliance with everyone out here. So Today, I'm very excited to have my special guest on today. Again, we're talking about getting knocked down and getting back up along the journey. And my special guest is Cami Lehman. Cami has been a coach, top leader, visionary strategist, and trainer in direct sales for over 28 years. She left her job in corporate America 27 years ago to work from home as a mom and be a mom at home. (laughs) And this is where her entrepreneurship journey began. On March 2nd of 2020, Cami launched a top rated podcast on iTunes called She's Invincible. You definitely need to check that podcast out. And also I know I had the honor of being a guest on there. So check out her podcast. It has been ranked at an all time high of 42 in the business and entrepreneurship category. She has since helped many others launch their own top podcast. She is passionate about helping women discover their greatness, increase their worth, and expand their vision. Cami is also the managing director of the Ben Salem PA chapter of Polka Dot Powerhouse. And again, you will find me in there too, so come say hi. And Polka Dot is a worldwide connection group for women and the owner of Cami. She's also the owner of Cami Lehman Coaching and Consulting. And she is going to be launching the Be Invincible Podcast School in January 2022, where she's going to teach others how to launch their own top podcast too. So welcome, Cami, to the show. Oh, Nicole, it's so great to be here with you today. I'm listening to you do your opening thinking, are we supposed to be talking about health? Because I'm out. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, no. This is again, like with the guests, I want you to really share your brilliance because you know, I've, my wheelhouse is the fitness, nutrition, and mindset and happy to share that on Tuesdays. And, and the people who are watching the podcast, you know, that when I have guest on, I do interject my thoughts on weight loss. Somehow we always come back to the topic of weight loss, which is not a problem. So don't worry about that for sure. Oh my so gosh. Cammie, tell me a little bit about you and how you got started doing what you're doing. Oh, girl, this is all a surprise to me too. (laughs) So I feel like I'm just sitting back and watching life evolve and it just keeps moving into the next greatest version. And it is so exciting. So I'm going to take you back to, uh, you know, as as our topic is about obstacles, I feel like uh, this is a good place to start is, you know, I was a teenager in high school, just like the rest of them. And um, I met my 
uh, love of my life. I was a freshman. He was a senior. We met the last week of school before he graduated. We would have probably never met. Mm-hmm. Um, and soon thereafter, like about a year later, we got caught doing things that kids should never do, <laughs> which resulted in me being a sophomore pregnant, which is crazy. Um, and so talk about obstacles. Here I was, we moved in that time period. We actually moved from one place to another another and I was out of the school district and I had to go to a new school and here I was the pregnant 10th grader trying to make new friends in a new school yeah and nobody wants their kid hanging out with a pregnant 10th grader let me tell you so that was like the first obstacle you know was just that and then um, being pregnant and being young and being pregnant uh, I had to finish school with a private tutor but you know the end of that obstacle was that I got my diploma before all the kids in my class I finished early. So it was perfect for me. But, you know, I went through that whole finishing school, having a job, taking care of a baby. I was 16 and did that. So um, I feel like I could talk about obstacles today and really, really give some uh, encouragement and some hope to the listeners out there, no matter what they're going through. So I did all that. Then I got a job at corporate America because at the time that was really the place to go. I did that for many years, but when I had my next child, I realized like I had missed so much of the first one because I was in that crisis mode that um, I wanted to stay home. And that's really where I made that shift, left corporate America, became a work, as you said, work from home mom. I was there taking care of the kids. When you decide to work from home, the kids don't leave. (laughs) (laughs) FYI, I think think 2020 taught us that well. Uh, The kids are there too. You work it out. And so I did that for 28 years, but it was in the last, I would say, four years that things really changed for me. I was a top leader in a direct sales company. I earned 15 free cars did all the fun things, traveled around the world, built a huge organization, you know, but sometimes we chase a dream. And when we get it, we realize it wasn't really what we wanted. Mm -hmm. And we're like, what? there's got to be more than this, you know, and that's really what happened. And so I was searching for this networking group. I came upon what you mentioned, Polka Dot Powerhouse, and I had searched high and low for like 10 years. And when I walked into this place, I was like, oh my gosh, I found my people. (laughs) And, uh, and the the rest is history. I mean, my association with this group, uh, the professional women and the supportive atmosphere is really what took me on the next part of my journey, which was, stepping into my own company, having my own coaching company, uh, being able to help so many more people, not just the people that were in my organization. And that to me was amazing. So I ended up starting that company, been able to help so many other people, women, entrepreneurs, that's mostly who I work with. And then just in 2020, I was just chasing a dream. (laughs) I, I, you know, my ultimate goal was always to have like a radio and TV talk show. And so I I I met someone through podcasting and was like, wow, I think I want to do that. And I jumped in. I had no idea what I was doing. In fact, I'll pause and say that I've never had any idea of anything I was ever doing. I just jump in and figure it out as I go, right? So I'll be the best parachuter. Um, And so that's really been my whole life story. So I jumped in and I learned as fast as I could in, in 28 days. I launched a top podcast and I have to tell you, it was 11 days before the world shut down and podcasting has tripled, but Mm -hmm. I had no idea. So, you know, I think the lesson in that is like, go with your gut. If you feel drawn to something or you feel this immense uh, pulling or this something really, really speaking to you and it gets louder and louder and louder, just say, yes, don't try to figure it out because (laughs) you don't know what's coming. Right. But man, (laughs) I was so excited to be on that day. Right. Of like the whole world is shutting down. And I'm like, yeah, but I can podcast from my office down the hallway and I can, this, this gives me more listeners, right. More people that we can stream this great information and encouragement to. So that's really how it happened. Um, I launched in the top. I was honored to be a speaker at the graduation. I was one of the two commencement speakers and I started doing launch coaching with other podcasters that were going through the school. So I would help them and support them and coach them through their 
their launch and every one of them were in the top 50. And mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this really works. And so um, now I am like, wait a minute, this is so much fun. I love it. I want to keep it going and I'm monetizing. So I wanted to be able to help other entrepreneurs to be able to not only have a top podcast, but to monetize it and use it as a marketing funnel to draw and attract their ideal clients. And yeah. so that's what it is. So I'm so excited, uh, just help other women and uh, get their message out there. People need what you have and yeah. you just have to bring it to them. Yeah, oh, I love your story. Cause I know we met, um, we must've met shortly after you started your podcast. Cause I know you asked me to be a guest on there. And I can attest that she is not lying one bit about who she is. She is always willing to offer help and support other people. And um, I love that about you, Cami. Um, and I love you. that you jump in because I'm a jumper in too. Like jump in and then figure your way around because I think there is something about doing that because there's less mind drama because there's a lot of women that are like, oh, I would really like to start a podcast, but... And then you start listing all the things of like, oh, my kids are here. It's too loud. It's this, it's this and this. And then you don't do it. And not to be it's morbid, true. but like they say, you know, how many, um, I forget the exact phrase, but like how many unfulfilled wishes and dreams are met in the graveyard? You know, like go for your dreams. If you want, I the can't body believe you, you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Nicole, that is one of my favorite Les Brown quotes. So Les oh, Brown <laughs> says, he says the most valuable property in the world is the graveyard because so many people have gone there with their dreams still yeah. in their hearts yeah. and that they never pursued them. Oh my yeah. God. That's my biggest fear. Like I want to go faster, right? The older I get, the faster I want to go because I know the clock is ticking. You know, we never, we don't know how much time we have, but it's mm -hmm. not really in the time it's in the moments it's in how fast you can create and how many memories you can enjoy and and create for yourself and other people yeah. and and so time is not really a calendar it's really your action and your motion yeah um and um i'm not sure when this podcast will come out but um my grandmother just passed away this uh past weekend and she was a hundred and i love my grandma dearly but she was ready to go like when she was 85. And for me, I always look at that and she was a beautiful woman. She loved us dearly and everything, but she just didn't want to be here. And I'm like, I don't want to be, I mean, I've got some strong genes. Like my grandfather on my dad's side died right before he was 103. So I plan on living to be 110 at least. <laughs> so I've got some things that I want to do before that happens. Um, but like, really, you're exactly right. We don't know when our time is and not to be morbid on this podcast or Debbie Downer, but like, it's supposed to inspire you. Like we don't know when our time is. So we all have, I feel a message to share with the world an impact to make a ripple in this world. And what is yours? And it doesn't have to be this, like, I'm going to save all the children thing. It could be, I'm going to be the best mom to my dog ever, you know, like find your passion and go for it. Now, before I get off on a tangent on that, <laughs> let's dive into today's topic as far as what is the biggest thing that you think holds people back? Yeah, I, you know, I, my first, the thing that I always say, which is so true is uh, the biggest thing that holds people back is they're so worried about what other people are going to think. Yeah. Um, and I'm here to just <laughs> debunk the myth. <laughs> Nobody's thinking about you. <laughs> There, we are so worried about what if I say the wrong thing? What if it doesn't work out? What if I fail? What are people going to say? What are they going to think? I promise you, they're not thinking and they're not saying. They don't care. And, and it is the way it should be. We should all be running our own race. And yeah. we should, you know, did you ever see that picture? It was Michael Phelps and it was about the Olympics and it said, um, winners focus on winning and losers focus on winners mm. and right so there was a picture of the his the competitor looking at him <laughs> to the right, right. why he was why he was winning the loser <laughs> was watching him win yeah. and if that's not you know a depiction of what life is all about i don't know what is and i want to tag on to what you were saying about like time and and life and all of that you know i've been doing a lot of work with a um cancer foundation with metastatic breast cancer this year mm -hmm. and um one of the things 
things that I have noticed uh, in just being in that environment is that uh, people think they have all this time. And the truth is, you don't. You don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe you have 100 years. But what if you only have 50? Right. You know, people say 50s middle age. I say, oh, I would feel much better about that if I knew more people that live to be 100. Uh, so, you know, but here's what I think is that, um, you know, people don't start living until they find out they're going to die. Like yeah. if they get a diagnosis and then it's like, oh, this is it. Hey, guys, this is it. Anyway, don't wait for the diagnosis. Pretend it's already here because we're dying every day. Right. Yeah. Especially, you know, if we're not following what you say about shaping it up and, and living that healthy lifestyle, then we're going even faster. But um, it's it's so important to remember, don't wait until you hear you, you might die from a disease before you really start living your life. When people are on their deathbed, they do not regret the things they did. They always regret the things they didn't do. That is yeah. every time the conversation around death is the people regretting what they have not done. So don't be, don't be that story. Yeah. Um, I always tell a story to my clients in the sense of like, you know, if you go to the doctor and they tell you, you have six months to live, if you don't lose 20 pounds, then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I can lose 20 pounds. You know what I mean? Like, why are you waiting for that, that diagnosis? Why are you waiting for that to happen? Because it doesn't have to be that way. And you know, it's like anything smokers who have, you know, found out they have lung cancer and they're like, Oh, I better quit. You know, you don't, it doesn't have to be, don't, why do we have to be so extreme? <laughs> like just do the thing so you can live a long, healthy life. Um, so what is the biggest obstacle that you had to overcome on your journey to success? And I know you touched on, you know, being a teen mom and things like that, but what would you say uh, more in the like recent yeah, this is so good. Um, and probably shocking to hear. So, um, I, the thing is, you know, I mentioned being in a direct sales business and having a big organization and doing that for 28 years. And, you know, the biggest thing is you have to let go of the good to get to the great. Mm. And this is a story about that. And so, you know, being in that company and, you know, I spent 28 years convincing women that this was the best opportunity in the land. And you know what it was, it really was. And, you know, for the people and for the timing and all of those things, but when it came time for me to move on, I really struggled with that. And I stayed longer than I should have because mm. I was having trouble letting go. And I would say that was the biggest obstacle was I was delaying my success because I was afraid of, you know, my integrity. I would say I was trying to protect my integrity. I was thinking this is out of integrity for me. I've told them for all this time. And now I'm going to say, oh, but this opportunity over here is better. Uh, but the truth is, as you evolve, there are always better opportunities. And again, I think this is why I feel like I can really speak from the microphone about, uh, you know, letting go and of the good to get to the great. You cannot be receiving while you're holding on. Mm -hmm. and you'd, right. Like you have to free up your hands, your energy, your space, your mind, your, all of those things, uh, in order to go to that next level. And sometimes it's okay for necessary endings, right? Like yeah. not, things don't have to be forever. I mean, of course that's, that could be your commitment, but there are times when necessary endings come into play. And honestly, it was the hardest thing for me to make that shift. But when I did, it was the most empowering thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I was going to miss all the people. I thought I was going to, you know, the, it was going to change and it was going to be a negative thing. And I just said to someone the other day, I don't miss any of it. Like I am so filled with joy and passion and just all of the things about what I'm doing now. And I think that's the biggest obstacle, the most painful place you can ever be is in limbo, in mm. that place where you're not making a decision, where you're resisting and you're avoiding. And even though everything in your body is telling you and your heart and your mind that this is the right thing, the hardest place is to be sitting there in the middle and not taking that step. And the truth is, even if you make a mistake, if there's even such a thing, right? Mm -hmm. We learn from everything. But even if you walked away from something and then it wasn't the best idea, 
it's the most empowering part of your life because you thought it through, you made the decision and you stepped out in that courage and faith. And it can never be devastating because always great things come from it. I think the problem is we have great things packaged up in this pretty package and they usually don't look like that when they get here, right? Like we <laughs> write it all out, like it's going to be this and this, and this is how we're going to do it. And this is what it's going to look like. And then we get it and we're like, wow, this is great. It doesn't look anything like we imagined, but it's always better. Mm -hmm. And that is the coolest thing is that your mind can't even comprehend the greatness that is trying to come upon you. And yet your need to like worry about all those things hold you back. But I literally like had pain, like physical pain yeah. in my stomach. But as soon as I made the decision and took the action, the pain left mm -hmm. and it never came back again. And it has been the best, greatest decision ever. Yeah. So yeah, As you're talking, I'm like feverishly taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, have you ever heard the story and I'm going to mess this up, but like it's the monkey and the banana and the banana is in the cage and the monkey puts his hand in to grab the banana. And the, what the monkey doesn't realize is he's trying to get the banana out of the cage, but if he just let go, the banana would fall and it would like come out. And um, I don't know where I heard that story, but it's so true. Like we are so tight to hold on to that banana but if we don't realize that if we just let it go it falls right out like we're so tied to our stories um and I know for me when I started my business in 2006 I and I've talked about this on the podcast is like I followed the fitness and nutrition guidelines I made the meal plans I made the people food log I not made but you know yeah, we food logs. We did the all the stuff, the macros, the counting the points, or not points, the calories, and all that. And this is the way we're going to do hard workouts. We're going to do boot camps, and it worked, but not long term. And then halfway through my business, I realized the whole mindset piece and that whole shift. And like, it doesn't have to be hard. And I think you're exactly right. What you were saying is, is like, you know, you love the business you were in, and you were passionate about it. But then you got another piece of knowledge that was like, wait a minute, this is so much better. And it's not that the first one wasn't, but like, I know for me, I love that I found the mindset piece because I can give that to my clients now and they can lose it forever. It's the, the weight, not just beat themselves up and have to food log for the rest of their lives. So I'm grateful for that. Um, yeah, one of my, um, I'm not a big person on like words of the year type thing, but I'm noticing the word that keeps coming up for me is decisive. And what you exactly said, like, once you make the decision, it's like getting married. Once you make the commitment, I'm getting married. I'm no longer going to date any other men. All of a sudden your brain frees up and you're like, oh, I don't have to worry about that anymore. And it's the same thing with weight loss. It's the same thing about committing to a podcast or a business or whatever. You're, you're allowing all those other thoughts that are running through your head of indecision to not bog you down anymore. So I love yeah, all that. And it's not even just in your head. It's, it takes over your body. Like it causes mm -hmm. illness, right? Stress, anxiety, depression, uh, overeating, right? Emotional <laughs> eating. You right. run to the junk drawer. You're like, oh, I can't <laughs> deal with this. You, there's so many things, but it really does take over. And, and but as soon as you make the decision, it, the, the, everything just starts coming together. Yeah. Like you couldn't like even fog lift. plan on your <laughs> yeah. own. I know. Yeah the fog does. And you know, you have to remember you're evolving, right? So if you're going to, everything is made to grow. So mm. if you're going to evolve, then there is always going to be, I just had this conversation this morning. Uh, there's always going to be that next best thing. You, you're not going to just stay there. And yeah. so you want to be open to that. And it almost like childlike curiosity. And, and my biggest thing is like the best is yet to come. I say that mm. all the time. And I just encourage people to just live their life that way, that even in the greatest moment of your life or your day, you still have to remind yourself, this isn't the best. The best is still yet to come. And then go out there and create that for yourself. Yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I'm just going to marinate in that for a little bit. Um, <laughs> So um, let's talk a little bit about launching podcasts. Oh, so of fun. So fun. What do you want to know? We could talk about anything. Okay. Well, we are trying to keep this podcast relatively short. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, just give, I guess, a uh, tidbit for anybody who is interested in starting a podcast 
and like whatever you want to go with on that. Yeah. So there's two, there's two things about podcasting. There's being a podcast guest and then there's being a podcast host. So many benefits, some of them are the same. Uh, being a guest is amazing. I have met so many women who were podcast guests on many, many podcasts, and then they built their confidence and their courage and just their pure guts to get in front of the camera and have the conversations. And that made them the greatest podcast hosts. Uh, but in being a guest, it's a great way to get your message out there to, uh, you know, up level the visibility, uh, your influence and impact in the world. So that's really cool. Uh, when you uh, become a host of a podcast, so there's, there's a lot of work in, in the, you know, the middle. Uh, but once you decide and you go forward, you know, the biggest thing is messaging, right? So the, some people, like to just have a podcast because they just want to talk and they want people to listen. Mm -hmm. um, other people, and this is what I teach, is how to have a podcast and monetize your business, your whatever your business is. So what you do is you you direct your your messaging to your attracting your ideal target. So whoever your target market is, that's the messaging that you're going to combine to speak to those people about your topic, which is what you're an expert in and what your business is. And so that is the coolest thing ever, because what you do is you attract your target market. So it works like a marketing funnel and mm -hmm. you're able to attract them, bring them in and monetize your business through your efforts of podcasting, as well as get that information and education out so you can empower and impact and educate the people in the world. And it immediately uh, elevates you to the authority in your niche. So, mm -hmm. which is so cool, right? You know, writing a book is another way to do that. Being a podcast host is another way to do that. But what makes it great is that you're teaming up. So like you and I have been, you know, you were on my show last year. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, I think it was around this time, uh, <laughs> but you were, yeah, you were on my show last year. But what's so cool about that is that we're teaming up so I'm sharing you with my listeners and you're sharing me with your followers, right? And that is a beautiful collaboration that is perfect in the world in business today. And I, you know, we need more of that. And I mentioned, you know, podcasting has like tripled since 2020. And that's the truth, not just in how many podcasts there are, but how many mm. listeners have turned to podcasting because they didn't have a commute to work, right? So they were home and they could just turn it on and they could do their, whatever they do, it could play in the background. Um, and so they listen to them at the gym and when they're outside walking, what a great way to like kill off that whole exercise thing. If I just put on your ear, your hair head, headphones and go for a two mile walk, which I do a lot. So, um, but yeah, and it's, it's, you're filling your mind with good stuff. And the thing is, it's on demand. You just go on and search whatever topic you want to hear about today. Maybe there's something you need support in, in your business, Nicole, like marketing, right? Maybe you want to up level your marketing in your company. So then you go find a really great top marketing podcast and turn it on and go for a two mile walk. When you come home, you've exercised, you're healthier and you're smarter and you you have some things you can put into action that's going to help you right now. And I just love, and it's free. Yeah. It's free. Where else can you go and yeah. get free? Um, I am a huge podcast listener. Obviously I have a, my own show, but like I am constantly listening to podcasts and um, I tend to gravitate, like I'll binge listen to like one and then I'll move to another. And then I go back and I have my favorites. Um, but yeah, exactly what you said. I know for me personally, I, um, whenever I go for walks or even when I'm working out, I listen to podcasts. I don't listen to music very rarely depends on my mood, but <laughs> I feel like it's, you know, and again, I guess it depends on what you're listening to, but, um, I just feel like it feeds your mind too. You know, um, I love the aspect, uh, we were talking off, um, before we started this episode, but like, so I'm going into my third year of podcasting and I just am constantly humbled and amazed at the spread Meaning like I look at the stats, um, there are people in South Africa that are listening to this. There are people in Australia, in Finland, in Sweden. And, you know, I've seen the, my podcast go up the ranks in Canada and I, you know, all over. And it's just, it 
blows my mind that we can have that kind of an impact where you and I are sitting here talking on a Zoom call and then spreading it to the world. So like, and you know, to your effect of like, if anybody is starting a podcast, if you haven't listened to like my first episode, go back and listen to how bad it was, first of all, probably. (laughs) But I, and I did the same thing. I jumped in. I met somebody who has done a podcast and we talked for at a coffee shop and um, he offered his opinion and um, what to do type thing. And then at the end, he told me, this is like December 27th of whatever year that would have been three years ago. And he goes, when are you going to launch your podcast? And I literally gave him the week later, January 7th or something like that. And I was like, crap, (laughs) I just committed, you know, but I jumped in and here I am going into year three. I love doing it's podcasting. amazing. Yeah. So it's amazing. And it's a great, especially with what we do as coaches, it's a great way to give free information. Yes. I'm not everyone can afford to buy programs at certain times in their life. And this is an opportunity for them to get to work with you for free by learning everything yeah. you're sharing. Yeah. And that is an amazing gift that you're giving the world that they, you know, that they might not otherwise get, you know, it's funny, you were talking about like Finland and all these different places. So my podcast, of course, is called She's Invincible. And it is about women, right? It's about female Mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. It's about uh, giving them education to make them better in what they're already doing. But we also, as you know, pull back the curtain and we share the good, the bad, and the ugly of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing because you get to hear, thinking about obstacles, which is what our topic is, uh, the obstacles that these women have had to overcome to get to the success that they have today. And the whole reason for that is because women are constantly comparing themselves and coming Mm -hmm. up short. And as you mentioned, this just triggered it was you said, go back and listen to my first episode episode, right? So what happens is they see you today and they see you're so polished and well-spoken and you've got it together and you've got a a top podcast, but they have no idea what that looked like three years ago. They have no idea the struggle for content, the replays, the do-overs, the edits, all the things that you went through. They have no idea. So when they look at you, they think you're so lucky Uh, until Mm. they actually hear your story that they realize, wow, it's not easy for anybody. And, and we all need to overcome to get to success. The, the more successful we are, the more obstacles we've had to overcome. And so that is, to me is amazing. One of the things I wanted to mention is our podcast ranked in Pakistan, number 19 for women who like didn't even have rights to most things and here like there's no better feeling than knowing right so you you put this out there and you know there's some woman who's teaching her kids and drinking her tea Mm -hmm. and she's listening to you empower her uh when all the work the whole you know, country yeah. is against that and that you are, do, you're still getting through, right? If you can't get there in person, you can stream <laughs> it through a podcast and it's just nothing better feeling, no better feeling than just being able to make a difference like that. And uh, so I love that you're everywhere because people need to hear you and you're making an impact the broader it goes. So I hope that your listeners will keep on sharing uh, mm-hmm. your podcast. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Please share anytime you have a podcast that you love, you know, and I don't think people really understand um, from a business aspect in the sense, unless you've done a podcast or something like that, the effect that you have of like writing a written review and sharing it with people is huge for these people who are podcast hosts that helps them out tremendously. So if you, whether you love the show or whatever show you're listening to or Cami show, leave a review and share it with somebody like just one person doing that is so helpful to the people who are hosting the podcast shows. Um, so Cammy, we are going to wrap up a little bit quicker, but do you have a, um, where can people find you? first off. Oh yes. On my website. And I was just going to say, if you leave a review on the She's Invincible podcast and say that you heard me on Shape It Up, I will put your review on my website. So we're doing that now. We're putting reviews up on the website to spotlight the people that are actually taking the time to do that because it is so valuable to us. Um, But they can reach me on my website at CamiLeeman.com and everything that I am and do is posted there on that website. Awesome. And then everybody, 
everybody. These will be, uh, the links will be in the show notes as well. So you can check that out. So we're going to quickly do a lightning round, which is where I kind of put my guests on the spot and ask them strange questions about <laughs> themselves. So Cammie, question number one, coffee or tea? Tea. Tea, really? Tea. Coffee drinker. No co I love the smell of coffee, but I can't do it. Oh. Tea is for me. <laughs> Um, what is your favorite book and why? Oh, that is so hard. So, um, oh my gosh, I have like, I, you know, I read like four to five books a week now because my, a lot of my guests are authors. Um, I would, I'm going to say my favorite is John Maxwell and, um, that is five levels of leadership. That's what I'm going to say is my favorite. Oh, that's that the one out. who's there's, there's actually another one that if that's my favorite, <laughs> but the one that had the most impact on my life was, uh, everyone communicates, do you connect? That was Ooh. the, that book was, had the most powerful impact on my life and business than any book I've ever read. Hmm. I will check that one out too. Okay. If you could choose one song to play every time you walked into a room for the rest of your life, what would it be? I'm still standing. <laughs> Elton John, right? Elton John. <laughs> that is like, that is That's my fight song. song. <laughs> yes. Like you only got to hear a little part of my journey and the obstacles. Oh my gosh. If you only knew. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, this, I had a call before this one and I was saying to my, to the girl on the phone, I said, you know, you come out of things and you're like, you come out doubled over with the air knocked out of you. And then you sign this kind of stand up and then you stand up straight and then you balance yourself. <laughs> and then, you know, like I made it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you should write, you yeah. should write a, uh, a book about your life. Uh, I actually did. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. Out soon. <laughs> awesome. Well, you have to let us yes. know when that comes out. Okay. Last question. Did you have a favorite toy growing up? Oh, a favorite toy. Oh my gosh. The, the one that I could say was that baby alive. I, you know, I've always <laughs> loved kids it. and babies. I like, I always wanted to be a mom, you know, I mean, yep. that happened really quick, would. but, but, uh, you watch what you're manifesting, <laughs> but yeah, like I love, I wanted that so bad. I love that you could like feed the baby and then it, it would come out the bottom. Like then you change the diaper. Like, oh my gosh, little do you know, right. Then you go create that in real life and you're changing diapers for years. Yeah. But anyway, that was my, I think that was my favorite one. I'd say second was my easy bake oven. Oh, that's so funny. I just interviewed someone and they, that was theirs too, the easy bake oven. All right. So one quick tip that you want to leave everybody with. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Run, run for your <laughs> dreams. Like you are on fire. Um, and remember tough times don't last but tough people do. Ooh, and good. so remind yourself, you, you know, in the darkest nights of the soul that the best is yet to come tomorrow. There'll be a new dawn of a new day and you have another opportunity and you need to run for those dreams. Like you are on fire. I love everything you just said. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to make that into a quote. I think. <laughs> All right, Cami, thank you so much for coming on the show and being a guest and sharing your brilliance and your stories and everything. I really appreciate you taking the time out and coming on today. Thank you, Nicole. It's been a pleasure to be here with you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, if you want to support the podcast, write a written review. Five stars would be great if, <laughs> if you're feeling it, um, but write a review and share it with a friend. All right. That is all for us today. And I will see you on the next podcast. Take care.